Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to look at how we can tell if a function has an inverse function or not. So first, let's talk about what is an inverse function. Inverse functions are a set of functions that undo one another. So we know about inverse operations like addition and subtraction. We know that those two undo one another. Same kind of idea with multiplication and division. We know that those two operations undo one another. Well, we can also have functions that work the same way. Functions that undo one another. But not every function has an inverse function. So we first want to check to see if a function will have an inverse by performing a test called the horizontal line test. Now you may remember the way that we test to see if a function or if a relation is a function is using the vertical line test. So the vertical line test tells us whether or not the graph that we're looking at is a function. So kind of the reverse of that is to check for the horizontal line test to see if there would be an inverse function. So it works about the same way. You're gonna draw a horizontal line or drag a horizontal line through your graph. If that horizontal line touches your graph more than once, then your graph fails the horizontal line test and will not have an inverse. If, however, you can draw as many horizontal lines as you want, and they never touch more than one time, then we can say that our graph passes the horizontal line test and our function will have an inverse. So this graph here, our first graph that we looked at, this fails the horizontal line test, so we would say no inverse function. But this one over here, our second graph, our x cubed, this one passes, so we will say this one has an inverse function. So we call functions that will have an inverse, that is, functions that pass the horizontal line test, we call them one-to-one. -one. So that term comes from the fact that if a function can pass both the vertical line test making sure that it is a function, and then also the horizontal line test stating that it does have an inverse, that only happens because each x value has a unique y value. So we know that for something to be a function, it can't have repeated x values, but to be a one-to-one -one function, we also need to have no repeated y values. So this first function here that did not pass the horizontal line test, we would say this is not one to one. But this x cubed graph, which did pass the horizontal and the vertical line test, we would say that this one is one to one. So once we've determined whether or not a function is one to one, that is whether or not it has an inverse, how then would we find that inverse? So, because we know that inverse functions undo one another, then we would want to swap the inputs and the outputs. So thinking about that, normally we take an x value or a value in the domain, we run it through a particular function, let's call that function f in this case, and we get y values or the range. So what an inverse does is it takes a y value and it runs it through the inverse and it gives you back the x values. So notationally we call inverses f inverse and we put this little almost like a negative one power and so then we get this set of functions f of x and f inverse of x that undo one another. So we swap 
the inputs and the outputs, or we can think swap the x's and the y's. So let's put all that together and see if we can find an inverse function. So find the inverse of y equals 3x plus 1 if it exists. So the first thing that we need to do is check really quickly whether or not this function y equals 3x plus 1 is 1 to 1. So drawing a quick graph, this is a line, mx plus b. It has a y-intercept of 1 and a slope of positive 3. So my graph would look something like this. So I know that it is a function because it passes the vertical line test. And if I were to drag horizontal lines, it also passes the horizontal line test. So this is a one-to-one -one function, which means it will have an inverse. So now that we've determined that, we're going to use this idea that inverses swap x and y. So I'm going to take my x and my y and swap them. So x equals 3y plus 1. Okay, so step 1 was check horizontal line test. Step 2 was swap x and y. And step 3, the final step, is going to be just resolve for y. So take this equation and re-put it into y equals. So I can do that by first subtracting 1 from both sides. So now x minus 1 equals 3y. And then finally divide both sides by 3. So that gives me 1 third x minus 1 third equals y. And this is my inverse of y equals 3x plus 1. So again, this is the inverse of this guy up here. All right, guys, that does it for this video on inverse functions. We'll catch you in the next one.